everyone, this is Erin with Five Parks Yoga. Thanks for joining me today for these, this um, cross-training yoga class for athletes. Um, keep in mind, this is not a recovery class or deep stretch class. This class is actually meant to um, give you an option for supplemental fitness. Um, if you're into a particular sport or activity and want to target new muscles in your body, this will be basically a full body experience which combines strengthening and stretching, um, which is one of the beauties of yoga. So if you like these classes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And let's go ahead and get started today in a child's pose. So bring your knees wide on your mat, bring your big toes to touch, draw your hips back towards your heels, and then walk your hands forward, releasing your forehead down toward your mat. Keep your arms active in extension. Spread your fingers wide, claw your mat with your fingertips. And then feel that nice stretch in your shoulders. Head is heavy, so your neck has no tension in it. Begin to breathe in and out through your nose. So draw the air in, let your belly fill up and fall between your legs as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out through your nose, draw your belly button back toward your spine, tighten up your core. So this is a very active pose with an active breath. Let's take three more breaths here. three of my breaths, so as long and slow as you can. And just settle into your space, connect deeply with your breath, listen to the sound of your breath as it travels in and out through your nose. And one more here. Keep your right arm long and extended on your mat. And then slide your left arm underneath your right. Come onto your left shoulder, left ear. Feel the stretch in the back of your left shoulder. Continuing to stretch out your hips and your low back. And then switch sides. So bring your left arm long into extension. Right arm underneath left. Bring right shoulder, right ear to your mat. Big breath here. Right arm long on your mat. And just for one more pose, keep your hips right where they are and walk your hands to the right so you feel a stretch in your left side. All down your left arm, armpit, ribs. Walk your hands back through center and switch sides. Feel a nice long stretch through your right side now. Come back through center, press up tabletop position. So that was a long time in our um, child's pose legs. So just stretch out your legs by extending your right foot back, tuck your toes under, press your heel back, feel the stretch in your calf, your hamstring, and then switch sides. So tuck your left toes under, stretch your left heel back, press it back, come back to tabletop. Then let's warm up our spine and with some cats and cows. So inhale, drop belly, lift crown of your head and tailbone and exhale round. Again, inhale. Exhale round. Last time, one of each. Inhale, cow. Exhale round to cat. Come back to tabletop position, tuck all 10 toes under and come into downward facing dog, releasing heels down toward the earth, hips come high, begin to pedal out your legs, bending and straightening one leg at a time, spreading your hands, your fingers nice and wide and pressing into the palms of your hands. So don't forget about your hands in your downward facing dog, you can peek forward Make sure that your middle fingers are pointed toward the front of your mat, and then peek back. And make sure that your heels are right behind your toes so they're not splayed out or in. And then take one more breath in this downward facing dog. And 
and then look toward your hands, walk your feet to the front of your mat and come into a ragdoll position. So knees have a generous bend, torso rests on top of your thighs, take opposite hand toward opposite elbow, let your head dangle, you can begin to sway side to side, maybe bending and straightening one leg at a time, maybe keeping your legs bent the entire time, that's an option as well. Come back towards center, release your arms down toward your mat, heel toe your feet together, and then you're gonna come up to standing nice and slow as you round your spine. Let your head be the last thing to arrive. Arms are heavy, dangling down by your side. And then inhale, lift your arms up overhead, peek up at your hands, exhale, draw your elbows down, lift your chest for a chest expansion, inhale. Reach up, and then exhale, take your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers, press your fists down. Again, lift your chest up, this time hinging at your hips, coming down with a flat back. Come to forward fold with chest expansion. From here, bend your left leg a lot, and then bring your arms to the left and gaze to the right. So you should feel a stretch in your IT band, your hamstring, a little twist in your spine, lots going on, expansion in your shoulders, come back to center, straighten your left leg, bend your right leg, arms to the right, gaze to the left. Again, just notice all of the things that are happening simultaneously in your body, just begin to notice the stretches, continue to connect to your breath, come back to center, inhale to a halfway lift, so come up to a flat back, Release your hands down toward the earth. Exhale, forward fold. All right, heel toe your feet out to about mat distance apart. Bring your toes off to a slight angle. And then inhale, rise up, reach your arms up. And exhale, bring your hands down in front of you. Interlace your hands, palms face up. We're gonna take some sunflowers. We're gonna build some heat in the body. This is gonna be a breath to movement um, act, um, exercise. So bend your, start to bend your legs, scoop your arms down. As you inhale, lift your arms up and overhead, and then off to the left as you scoop down. Okay, now start increasing the pace. Two more, and then reverse direction, starting out slow. Continue to breathe. All right, pick up the pace. Then all the way back up to center. Keep your feet just as they are. Reach your arms off to the side. Hinge at your hips. Palms face down so you have a flat back. Scoot back a little bit here. Bring your arms forward, palms to touch. And then exhale, slight bend to your legs and then just flop down. On your next inhale, straighten your legs, sweep your arms off to the side, come all the way up. Connect the palms of your hands above your head. Sink down into a squat, hands at heart center. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, bring your heels behind your toes, hinge at your hips, come halfway down. Palms face down, back is flat. Inhale, bring your arms forward, palms to touch. Exhale, gentle flop down, heel slightly in. Come all the way up, sweep your arms up. So toes are back out at a slight angle. Exhale, hands to your heart, sink down into a squat. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, heels behind, toes, arms off to the side, palms face down, flat back. Inhale, bring your arms in front of you, palms touch. Exhale, gentle body flop down, heels come slightly in. We're just gonna do that one more time. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, squat down. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, halfway down, arms off to the side. Inhale, palms touch. 
Exhale, release down. All right, from this flopped over position, just heel toe your feet back to hip distance apart. Inhale, monkey, so come up to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, high plank, hold it for five, four, modification is knees on the floor, two, one, shift forward, elbows stay in, lower down to your belly. Feet flat to the floor, inhale, peel up, cobra pose, elbows back and in, and then lift your hands up off the floor, keep your legs nice and active for three, two, one. Release down, hands touch, forehead touches, toes tuck under. Press up, nice one long line, high plank pose. You can always keep your knees on the floor. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up for three-legged dog position, hips are level. Hold it for another breath. Inhale here. Exhale, knee to nose, round your spine. See if you can make contact. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Again, see if you can tap your elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. See if you can tap your elbow. Pause, and then place your right foot on the floor to the outside of your left hand. Place your left heel down on the floor. Lift your left arm up. It's called fallen triangle pose. It takes a lot of strength. Really focus on your obliques, the muscles in your side to lift your left hip a little bit higher. And then place your left hand down on the floor. Inhale, three-legged dog. See if you can do that without dragging your foot. Lift it high up into the air and then open your hip. Bend your leg. Level your hips again. Straighten your leg. Bring your knee to your nose one more time and this time step your foot between your hands. Begin to straighten your leg for extended pyramid pose. This is a stretch for your hamstring on your right leg. So draw your right hip back, left hip forward. So there are two hips in one line. Release your forehead down toward your knee or your shin. You can have your knee as, as bent as needed. Just come to the comfortable edge of your stretch. All right, bend back into your right leg so you're in a low lunge position. Your right knee should be over your right ankle. Keep your left hand on the floor, or if you have a block and you want the assistance of your block, you can place your left hand on your block. And then sweep your right arm up. Maybe look up toward your thumb. If you're feeling unbalanced or unstable, just look down at your right toes. And release right hand to the floor. Step your weight onto your right foot and come into standing splits pose. In standing splits pose, you wanna keep your left hip in line with your right. And then let your head fall down toward your right toes. Look back toward the back of your mat so you have no tension in the back of your neck. Now lightly step way back into a low lunge position. Step back to high plank position. And this time lower if it's in your practice to chaturanga. So instead of all the way down, shift forward halfway down. Again, knees can be on the floor. And then come over to the tops of your feet. Press up to upward facing dog. And then back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. And begin to breathe in and out once again through your nose. Control your breath. Slow it down. And let's take those postures on the other side. So lift your left leg up behind you. Keep your hips level, press through the ball of your foot. Keep your gaze back toward the back of your mat. Take another inhale breath here. Exhale, knee to nose, round your spine. See if you can make contact, knee to nose. Press it back. 
Left knee, left elbow. Tap it, pause. Press it back. Left knee, right elbow, pause, and then place your left foot on the floor to the outside of your right hand. Release right heel to the floor. And lift your right arm up, fall in triangle. Focus on the muscles that come along your side. Tighten up, lift your right hip higher. Squeeze and release. Right hand to the floor. Now without dragging your foot, try to come back to three-legged dog. Lift your left leg up behind you. And this time open your hip, bend your leg. Level off your hips, straighten your leg, bring your left foot between your hands, come into low lunge, left knee over left ankle, begin to straighten your left leg. Extended pyramid pose, so your right heel is still lifted, pressing down toward your mat, and then release your forehead toward your knee or your shin. Enjoy the stretch in your left hamstring. You might need to slightly draw your left hip back, right hip forward. And then bend back into your left leg. Step onto your left foot. Lift your right leg up, a little pop there for standing splits pose. In standing splits, keep your hips level and then drive your heel toward the ceiling. So this is strengthening your right hamstring and stretching your left hamstring. Of course, there's a lot of strength going on in your standing leg as well. I'm sure you can feel it. And bring your right foot back down to the ground. Return to a low lunge position. Right hand either on a block or the floor. And lift your left arm up. And once again, gaze toward your fingers. If you're feeling balanced and steady. If you're not, if you're feeling a little unbalanced, gaze down at the floor whatever feels good. And then release back, low lunge, high plank, and this time right to chaturanga or to your belly if chaturanga is not in your practice. Press up, upward facing dog. And back to downward facing dog. Pedal your feet, shake out your head, calm your breath. And we're gonna continue on with some more standing postures, building strength and flexibility, and really working with the breath. So continuing to breathe in and out through the nose, slow and steady. Lift your right leg up. Place your foot between your hands. And then place your left heel on the floor and rise up to warrior one position. So sh wrists over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hips squared to the front of your mat. Breathe in here. Breathe out, come into warrior two position. You can lengthen your stances if needed. Gaze out across your front fingertips. Complete your exhale here. Reverse warrior, left hand slides down your left leg, right arm up and back, feel the stretch through your right side. Lower your right shoulder away from your right ear, breathe in. And then breathe out, just cartwheel your arms down, back into a low lunge position. In low lunge, your back heel lifts back up off the floor. Inhale, come up to crescent lunge, hold here again, shoulders or wrists over shoulders over hips, breathe in. And then breathe out, step onto your right foot, Come into airplane pose, variation of warrior three. So standing on your right leg, balanced here, one long line from the crown of your head back to your heel, breath in, and breath out, step back, low lunge. High plank position, inhale, chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale back to down dog. One breath here. Lift your left leg up. 
step forward. Place your right heel down on the floor and rise up for warrior one. Another breath here. Breathe in and out to warrior two if you need to extend your stance. Nice long arms, gaze out across your front fingertips. Feel the strength and flexibility building in your legs as you hold this posture for another breath. Reverse warrior, right hand slides down your right leg, stretch up and back. Lower your left shoulder away from your left ear. Maybe gaze up. Be mindful not to put too much weight into your back hand. It's just resting on your back leg. And then come all the way down. Low lunge. Back heel lifts up off the floor and stays lifted as you rise up to crescent lunge. So a little different than warrior one because your heel is now lifted. Take one more breath in. Now step onto your left foot, come into airplane pose. One long line. So keep your neck long, your gaze is down at the floor. Left leg is strong, right leg is lifted. Take another breath in. And hands to the earth, step way back, low lunge. High plank, inhale, chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, inhale, and downward dog, exhale. All right, so that's the flow we're gonna work with. Those are the postures, the warrior postures for our flow. It's gonna be breath to movement. As always, with breath to movement, you go at your breath's own pace, which may be different than mine. Try and make it steady, fluid, and in control. Okay, so warrior one, two, reverse crescent airplane, which is a variation on warrior three, okay? Right leg high, breathe in. Step forward, breathe out. Warrior one, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Reverse warrior, inhale. Low lunge, exhale. Heel lifts. Crescent lunge, inhale. Warrior three, or airplane pose, exhale, inhale, low lunge, exhale. High plank, inhale, chaturanga, or your variation, exhale, up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale. Right to the other side, left leg, inhale, step through, exhale, plant your heel. Breathe in, warrior one. Breathe out, warrior two. Inhale to reverse warrior. Exhale to low lunge, lift that back heel up off the floor. Inhale, crescent lunge, almost lost my balance there. Exhale, airplane. Inhale. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, high plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Upward dog. Back to downward dog as you breathe out. Let's take a cleansing breath in through your nose. Out through your mouth. One more of those. Come back to your ujjayi breathing in and out through your nose. and prepare to flow again. So right leg lifts, breathe in, step through, breathe out. Warrior one, inhale. Warrior two. Reverse. Low lunge. Crescent. Warrior three, or airplane pose. Breathe in. Low lunge, exhale. High plank, low plank, upward dog, 
downward dog and to the other side. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, step through. Inhale, warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse. Low lunge. Crescent. Warrior three. Inhale. Low lunge. High plank. Chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward dog. One cleansing breath. Breathe in. Out through your mouth. Look forward towards your hands. Step walk or float to the front of your mat. Come into forward fold. Breathe in, chair pose, hips low, arms high. Breathe out, airplane chair, lift your heels to balance. Breathe in, chair. Breathe out, balance chair. Breathe in, chair. Breathe out, balance. Inhale, tall mountain. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Assist your right leg coming into tree pose. Right foot either at your ankle, shin, or inner thigh. Hands at your heart or lifted up above you. We're taking five breaths here, so a couple more. Release. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, tree pose on the other side. <clears throat> you can use your hands to assist your left foot into tree legs, either ankle, calf, or inner thigh, hands at heart, or are lifted. Five slow, steady breaths here. Keep your gaze steady at one unmoving spot on the floor. Release your left foot, release your arms. Inhale, tall mountain. Exhale, forward fold. One last flow, inhale, monkey. Exhale, stepper float, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Release back to downward facing dog. Take one breath here. And release to child's pose. Take three breaths here. Okay, and then just walk your hands up. Come on to your shins. We're gonna do one, one last cardio burst in preparation for a jump through and a little bit of core work before we slow it down for the rest of our class. So we're just kind of covering, covering all the bases here, including getting your heart rate up a little bit throughout this class so you feel like you've got a, a little workout, I hope. Um, so these are called froggy squat jumps and um, they are good for preparing you for a jump through if you're working on that in your yoga practice or maybe you're totally new to yoga and you don't know what that is, but I will show you. Um, so if you wanna just watch me first, if you haven't done these, I'll show you a couple times and we'll do them together. <clears throat> what you're gonna do is come into a shortened downward facing dog with your feet together. So not at hip distance together. You're gonna look back at your heels, lift your heels high and then you're gonna sink back with your knees wide. So hips come toward your heels and your knees come wide. When you come forward and you jump up, your shoulders are gonna come over your wrists 
and you'll lift your feet up off the floor, you want to try and land lightly. Okay, so that's what a froggy squat jump looks like. So if you want to try it, come into a shortened downward facing dog. Feet together, squat back, knees wide. As you jump forward, make sure your shoulders come over your wrists before your feet lift up off the floor and then land lightly. Do a couple of these. Maybe get some hang time. Get your heart rate up. Couple more. And rest. So if that didn't feel challenging, feel free to do more. Do as many as you want. And I'm gonna show you really quickly a little jump through using your froggy squat preparation. So you'll bring your hands wider and you'll just sink back, get your knees wide, and then look forward, cross your ankles and come to a seated position. So maybe try it one more time. Shorten down dog. This is just a way to practice this movement. It's an Ashtanga movement. Bring your knees wide, squat back, look forward, cross your ankles, and land on your bum. All right, lower down onto your back and do just a little bit of core work. And then we'll do some deep stretches. Lift your legs straight up to the ceiling. Put your thumbs under your bum. Breathe in. And lower your feet to hover. Lift them up. And lower. Start to go at your own pace. Wherever you are, about three more. Hug your knees into your chest. Bring the soles of your feet to touch. So you're in a butterfly position, but keep your feet up off the floor. Take your hands to arrow mudra, interlace your fingers, release your index finger. Lift your shoulders up off the floor. Start to pulse. Pressing your fingers toward the front of your mat. Just two more. Hug your knees in, roll up to boat pose. Return to arrow mudra. Bring your hands to the right, kick your feet to the left for five, four, three, two, one, this is for your obliques again. Switch sides for five, four, three, two, one. Come back to center. We're gonna take a posture that's a great stretch for your hips, your glutes, and your shoulders. It's called cow face pose, so bring your left knee so it faces the front of your mat. Stack your right knee on top of your left. Even if that looks like this for you, that's totally fine. I just want you to feel a stretch in your outer hips. <clears throat> Bring your right arm up and over. Option one is to have your hand on top of your elbow. Option two is to clasp your hands behind your head or behind your shoulders. If you can keep an upright spine, so you're not rounding like so, and want more of a stretch, option three is to hinge forward. Release your hands, release your legs, and just switch sides. So you can just take your right knee on bottom, left knee on top. Make sure that both sitting bones are grounded on the floor so you're not leaning off to the side. So make any adjustments that you need. Left arm up and over, either right elbow on left, or right hand on left elbow, or hands clasp 
behind your back. If you can keep a tall spine, you're not hunched over and want more of a stretch in your hips, you can hinge forward. So lots of options. Just take the one that works for you and your sides may be different and that's very normal and absolutely okay. Last breath here. Release arms, release legs. Cross over your ankles, come onto your shins, bring your knees together. Separate your feet, sit your hips between your heels for a hero pose. This is a stretch for your quadriceps. Stay upright here, or if you want more of a stretch, come onto your forearms or onto your back. I'm gonna stay lifted on my forearms because my knees are a little bit tight today, but if you want to, feel free to come flat onto your back. I'm just gonna release my head back, stretch my throat, my jaw. And just make the stretch your own. If you're reclined, come all the way back up and then just cross over your ankles once again and we're gonna take a twist. So bend your left leg, kind of like cow face legs, knee points to the front. Stamp your right foot on the floor. Keep your sitting bones both grounded on the floor. Right hand out behind you. You can hug right knee with left arm or you can hook elbow outside of knee. Turn and start to look toward your right shoulder. Feel free to bind if you'd like. Let's switch it out. So switch your legs, right knee out in front, stamp your left foot to the floor. You can either hug your left knee in or hook elbow to knee, or you can bind. Look out over your left shoulder, a couple breaths here. from your twist. Both feet flat to the floor. We're gonna take one inversion today called shoulder stand if you wanna get upside down. If you're not familiar with shoulder stand, you can peek at me first. Once you're in the posture, don't move your head to keep your neck safe. So again, if you don't know what you're doing, first peek at me, then do the posture. So you're gonna come down onto your back, you're gonna lift your hips up and place your hands at your low back, and then press your legs up toward the ceiling. Look at your toes. Don't move your head side to side. This is an inversion. Your head is below your heart. You're reversing the flow of blood. If you are comfortable with shoulder stand and you love this pose, you can take leg variations. You can take a straddle to stretch your inner thighs. You can take eagle legs wrapping one leg around the other, maybe switching. One last option, you can stay here in shoulder stand or plow. Take your feet to the floor, out behind your head. A good stretch for your low back. And your hamstrings. You can either reverse out back to shoulder stand and roll down, or if you're in plow, you are welcome to roll down from plow. And then separate your legs and feet for happy baby pose, taking hold of calves, ankles, toes, inner edge or outer edges of your feet, rock side to side, a little massage for your spine. Hug 
Hug your knees in. And then prepare yourself for your final posture of Klashavasana. Standing your legs long on your mat. Resting your arms alongside your body. Feel free to move around so you get, get comfortable and that you can find a place to be still. Slide your shoulder blades underneath you. Palms face up. Feet fall open. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it at the top. One little extra sip of air. Let it go through your mouth. And then you can let go of your breath practice altogether. Come back to the natural rhythm of your breath. Let your body get really soft and heavy here. It's the most important posture in yoga. You just get to integrate your practice. So rarely do we find a time to lay in stillness and silence. Just take a quick scan of your body, maybe acknowledging what feels different now than it did at the beginning of your practice. I hope you enjoyed this cross-training yoga practice. You can mix it into your workouts anytime. in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart from my heart to yours. Namaste.